So we've spent time talking about YouTube. I gave you examples of videos. Hopefully that's piquing your interest to create YouTube videos. Uh, basically any social media can be boiled down to as building an audience to accomplish a goal. Uh, so with YouTube we can create videos and you might find this very fun or interesting, maybe even profitable. So let's talk then about creating an account and how to set it up and actually use it. Earlier in the day I asked you to also get a copy from the network folder of this folder. Let's take a look at what I gave you. It's a big folder, 103 megabytes. You can take this if you'd like with you on your flash drive or not, but in the video folder, what I've got here are the pieces of how I made a video. Now, I've got here the original movie clip, the unedited movie clip, where I recorded everything non-stop. Then I've got the finished version of it right here that's got my name on it and such. And then this is the sound that I put into the video clip. And I got that for free from YouTube. I'll show you where to get those. And then this is the file for Windows Movie Maker if you want to open my original video to, to see how that works. We're not going to look at that. We're only going to use the finished version of the video, which is the one with my name. So these are the pieces that I used to make that final video. And the actual editable file is still there for Windows. If we look at my video briefly, this is what we're going to work with. <coughs> Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos with the Tech Review Tuesday. Today I've got some new hardware for you. This is the Motorola Moto E. It's one of the newest devices running Android. <coughs> so I highly recommend this device and let's take a look why. So this device is very good because it's very powerful. It has all the particular apps that we might need. So it's just about a minute and a half long. You saw that there was some text here and there. There was a couple of cuts. A 20 megapixel camera. So as we see here, uh, these are all of the apps that I use on, on a regular basis. A lot of very useful ones. This device really helps you get all your work done and you've got the, the camera ability here where you can take a photo, take a video, send it to anyone, and it's a really good phone. So I give this five out of five stars and I highly recommend it. So this has been Victor Campos for the Tech Review Tuesday. See you next time. There's some subtle music playing. Was that from the music? No, that's, uh, like I said, that's coming from YouTube, the free YouTube um, uh, audio library. So what I've got here to break it down, again, in the other class we would learn how to make this, but I've got some sort of title, and for me, I love to do alliteration on my projects, but uh, there's some sort of title, you can make that text, that simple kind of text in Movie Maker or iMovie perhaps a little more complex, but not as complex as some of those other ones that we saw with really cool text zooming in and all of that. You can't quite do that with the basic iMovie or Windows Movie Maker. But there's some sort of title to catch the attention of the series of videos. There's there my name that appeared, which is my Twitter name. In YouTube, we will be able to make that active, that when my name appears there in the corner, someone can click on that. Right now, it's just edited into the video to make my name appear. Then the product appears. Again, this is text written in Movie Maker very easily, a little animation. I've got this shot. I just put the, I recorded it on, on one of these cameras just on my laptop. And then did you see that little fade there between one shot and then that little fade between the two shots? Mm -hmm. What does fade mean? What is that? Well, we see it. We see that it went from one shot to another. Watch this. Oh, okay. So watch right there. Oh. See how those two faded into each other. We can do that because I was saying something and then I didn't actually have to say it, so I cut out a portion and then I blended them together as a fade. Uh, sometimes people get obsessed with that to make these things blend together, and sometimes you don't need to. Sometimes it's part of the editing like that. That was a harder kind of edit. See, it was... It was like that, and then it jumped to that. Some people might say that was that was obvious, and that was a mistake. 
other people won't. This is up to you how you want the character of your video. But that sort of hard cut right there is also popular, and you see it all the time, and it's, it may or may not be the style that you want to do. I'm talking, and then at the very end, I say I'm giving this a review, and what I did, I put little stars there, five stars. So again, another animation right there. The trick with that is it was actually text, and I used emoji for those stars. Then I've got credits at the end. We can do that very easily with Movie Maker and iMovie, just some text zooming by, whatever speed you like. The big idea with this is that if a person did go all the way to the end of the video, there's also a link there. Visit us for exclusive coupons on Amazon. Website.com slash whatever. We can make that an active link when we actually upload it to YouTube. But here's one enticement perhaps to get people to watch the whole video. Because as we see and we set this up, our statistics, statistics, our statistics will tell us exactly our retention rate. Meaning how long did we retain people? How long did people stick around to watch individual videos or all our videos in total? So, um, the, um, the point with that is, if we, I didn't say it in my video, so it might have been better, but in my video I should have said, remember to stick around till the end of the video for exclusive coupons. That could entice people, even though it's only a minute and a half, people have short attention spans. And so if we can entice them over to watch the whole video, like telling them, stick, stick around for something here at the end, we can uh, hopefully get them. And then the name of that episode, and then a copyright if I want, or a web address, or whatever I want to put on the uh, tack on at the end of the video. So that's what we're going to work with. We are going to use this video. We're going to upload it. We're going to make it private so that no one will see it, but we'll upload a video so that we can understand how the channel works, how it's set up, and how to optimize a video. So we're going to assume you've got a video from your company. We're going to use my video. So here's the first thing we'll do. On the web browser, <clears throat> let's go to youtube.com Let's go to youtube.com and at the very top right corner you will see a sign in. Take a moment to sign in with the same Gmail account from last time. Remember we used Google Plus last time. Take a moment to log in with that. And this is always a little stumbling block because different people have different setups. So just take a moment to sign in and then uh, I'll look to see what you've got and then we'll proceed because that's always a little stumbling block.
putting the actual work of the channel into that image of that. So they can all be typed with the same address. Okay. And then that goes to the channels. They change that address to the same address. Okay. Because I couldn't have done that in Gmail, so it couldn't have already existed. Mm -hmm. You don't have to change variation variations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are we at the are we creating our accounts today for YouTube or we didn't have them already? The cool thing is because all of these are tied together, if you've got a Gmail or a Google Plus, you already have a YouTube. You just need to activate it. That's Try to get my um, let me get my screen to look like yours, but everyone clicked that sign in button, and let me sign in myself, and then we'll proceed. I had asked everyone to take a look on the top right corner where their icon was at, and when you clicked on it, I was just confirming that you did have an account. So let me sign in myself. Gmail, Google Earth, Google Maps, any Google thing. Google Plus. Okay, so one difference that you're going to see right away on mine is I signed in and right away it's saying use YouTube ads. You can create many YouTube channels, as we're seeing here, for personal or for clients. As I said, I teach this stuff, I also do this for a company. So my company, PMD Interactive, we do YouTube channels for some of the clients. When I log in, it asks me right away, which of these would you like to manage? So I'll show you where you can create more channels in a little while. But most likely, you're just going to use one because you've got one business. So let me, let me see the best way to do this here. So what you're going to see, you're logged in, and I had said to everyone, click on the top right corner, and then you will see, uh, on yours you're going to see probably simply your main account here, Creator Studio, and Add Account. So let's click on your icon at the top right corner and click on Creator Studio. Let me just do something right here because it is different than yours. Just one moment. So this is always the challenge of setting this up for a class. There's a few details here and there, so just one moment. Okay, so everyone clicked on Creator Studio. Does it then pop up to say, you don't have any videos yet? Upload a video. If you have a video, it'll say something else. OK, good. If you already have videos, you will see some screens back here about statistics and such. I don't have any videos yet. I have a brand new channel. So it says, upload a video. Um, before that, let's try this. So the Creator Studio, everyone People can use YouTube in two different ways, as a consumer or as a creator. If you're a consumer, you log on to YouTube, you watch a video, you like it, whatever. As a creator, we're going to be creators. We're going to be uploading YouTube videos, we're going to be checking the statistics, we're going to be optimizing the videos, etc. We're going to be creators. So we have, always at the top right corner, we have our icon. If you've already set it up, you've got your logo or whatever. It should come over from Gmail or Google+. But in any event, if not, you can fix it later. 
but we should all have up there on the corner a creator studio button. That's how we get into all of this stuff here. We're going to see we have all of these cool features to manage our videos, to do live streaming. Live streaming is a big thing that's taking off, and actually YouTube is, a late, is late to the party in that. There's been other live streaming channels out there. Ustream, for example, just the letter U, stream. This has been around longer. We've got Ustream.tv, and that one came out in competition to YouTube to be broadcasting live some video. There's also another one called, I believe it's still called Justin.tv. And now we've also got Twitch.tv. These are three video sharing sites. Justin and Twitch, I, Twitch especially, is more focused toward video games. So if you're a video game company and you want to show gameplay of your videos, you want a Twitch account. Justin, I haven't really heard, I haven't really used it, it's been around a long time, I haven't really used it, but it's another live streaming video uh, site. And Ustream TV, that's been around a while, I've used it for a while, there was free versions, there's paid versions, who knows what they're doing now. I haven't used it very recently, but when I was using it I liked it. But those are three competitors to YouTube focused on live streaming. Question. Is Periscope and Twitter, is that the same thing? I know that it did a live. Periscope, good point. Periscope, that's the newest kid on the block of live streaming. That one's an app. You download the app, you broadcast live, and all your followers see it live. There's no editing involved, it's all live. And Periscope, at the moment, is owned by Twitter. So it's got the backing of Twitter. So many factors, many ways to stream live. And YouTube themselves now has that too. So you might say, well, it's going to be difficult for me to create videos. I don't have the time and effort, but it's going to be easy for you to set up your webcam right there, turn it on live, talk about things, turn it off, and it records that. You were live at that moment, but it still recorded what you did for future playback. Um, there's another one that I like. I haven't gone into it recently again. I just haven't had time, but I really liked it. I, let me just confirm it before I give you the wrong one. I believe it's called Live Coding TV. Yeah, this is it. So the other one is called LiveCoding.tv. Live Coding TV. This one focuses on a tech audience where they are coding live. I have a channel there, and I haven't been on it recently, but that was fun. I set myself up there. I start to program and code, and people join in the channel and chat with me, and I chat with them. And I'm programming my app, and people are learning, and we're discussing. So just another way to reach an audience. So all of these live streaming apps or sites, this is the hot, the newest thing. So much that even YouTube has got it now. Yeah, that's why when you start talking about it, we're going to just, they do the live stream now. I started saying that. <laughs> yeah, that's... That was surprising me that they um, allow me to do it. And then they have something now called YouTube Red. I guess yeah. you have to put consumers. YouTube Red, I believe, is their music subscription thing. So if it's like a competitor to Pandora, uh, it's $10 a month. But um, here on our channel, there we have all these different things that we can do, like live streaming. You can use that open broadcaster software that I told you about, and they've got tutorials here how to set it up. You get open broadcaster, you set up your camera and such, and you'll be able to do live broadcasts. Um, that way you can have, let's say, on Twitter, all month long you're promoting. This January 30th, join us on YouTube for a live streaming of X. And you promote that on Twitter, you promote that on Facebook, Pinterest, whatever. And then you build that audience, they come watch live. Even if they didn't watch it live, it gets recorded. Then the following days and weeks, back on Facebook and Twitter, you're promoting. Missed our live broadcast? Here's a replay. And get people to come back and watch it. And then in your channel, you optimize it so that when someone watches it, nice, but they click to buy the product. You've got community, which is your comments and such. So we'll look at all of these screens after we have something to show for it. Editing our channel. Um, we've got a screen of analytics that will tell us in detail. It'll tell us minute by minute our traffic, uh, how much we're earning off of YouTube and such. And then create. 
create is cool because create is where we've got that free music. Um, the first thing we'll do here then is this is always the chicken or the egg in social media. Which do we do first? Which comes first? Do we upload a video or do we set up our channel? Because if we set up our channel first, we have nothing to show for it yet. But if we upload a video, we don't have any followers yet. Most of the time when I deal with social media for clients, I go through the tactic of setting up the channel first. So even though we've got ready to upload a video, we don't have too much to entice people to watch the video or to follow our channel. We're yet another generic YouTube channel. Either you're going to have the little blue icon here or you're going to have your company logo, but it's perhaps not fully filled in. So let's take a moment to look at some of the settings, some of the options first, and then we'll upload the video. Let's try it this way first. Can you click on channel here on the left? Question. Yeah, just a question. Mine appears up on the channel setup. I never set the channel up, but I did like subscribe to videos. Is that what set up my channel for me? Yes. There's different ways to set it up. If you if you want to like videos, you have to have a channel. So it made you one. Okay. Uh, if you never liked a video, you don't have a channel, but now we do. Okay. Thank you. Let's go to channel right here. We have a bunch of options. I won't look at every single one of them, but uh, for example, uh, under status, we've got verify. This is not to get that check mark. That's a different process. This is simply to verify that yes, you want to create a YouTube channel, you want to use it professionally, um, and all of its features. Because this screen shows a bunch of things that are turned off, a bunch of things that we don't have access to yet, such as custom thumbnails. One of the tricks that I can tell you is that your thumbnail of your video is one of the most important things to set up. These thumbnails here are going to uh, catch people's attention for you to watch. You cannot set this thumbnail yourself until you verify your YouTube. And again, that's not related to getting that check mark. Uh, this verify process, I believe all that will do is it will try to call you or send you a text message. I'm not going to do it. You can try it if you want it. But once you verify, you'll have more features of YouTube. YouTube is going to be checking that you are not violating copyrights and such, and you'll get a listing of that here. If you have violated copyrights, it'll tell you. Monetization. That's something that you can activate to start earning money off of your YouTube videos. We're not going to go into detail about that. It's not that complicated. It'll walk you through the steps. But this is how you can earn money from your YouTube videos. By default, my videos can only be up to 15 minutes long. I want them to be 20 minutes long. So you can turn that on. These ones are not available, but they will be once you set up Verify. Custom thumbnails is the big one. But it, what will happen is since you can't set a custom thumbnail, it will choose three random spots of your video, and you have to choose one of those to represent your video. And it might be a really awkward point where your mouth is all twisted. So if you want the perfect thumbnail, you have to activate Verify up here. You have to, I'm sorry, on that perfect thumbnails, how do you activate that? I can, I, I'm going to find someone my like I said, in this vi in this section here, you have to make sure you've verified, okay. and then when you actually upload the video, there will be a button that says Custom Thumbnail. Okay, I see that. Other things that we can do here, we can get paid in different ways. We can activate paid subscribers. Uh, if, we, if we get a copyright violation, can we appeal it? At the moment, nope. But once you verify, yes. Can we do private videos, unlisted videos? Yes. Unlisted videos? Okay, there's public videos. Anyone can see them and find them. There's private videos. No one can see them, basically. And then there's unlisted in the middle, which is no one can find them if they search, but they can still see your video if they have the address. So we can uplo upload videos, set them to unlisted, and give out that link to that video to our newsletter, let's say. And only the newsletter could see it without any special hoops to jump through. Live streaming is not on, but you can turn it on. 
We have a basic video editor. It's still not as good as Movie Maker or iMovie, but we have very basic video editing. And we can get fan funding. We can get we can do sort of the Kickstarter thing. You see, every company is ripping every company off now. <laughs> Kickstarter was the place to get donations for your for your uh, project. Now YouTube is adding a fan funding option as well. Turn it on and say and solicit donations so that people can help you pay for new videos. Mm -hmm. So monetization. <clears throat> And you can look at these on your own. Here's another one to look at. Let's go over to Upload Defaults. We've seen on all of those YouTube videos, right below, we've seen descriptions and such. Here's a spot if we're constantly uploading the same type of video and maybe doing a lot of how-to videos. It would be nice that some of these details are filled in for me. The default here, every video that I upload, will it go automatically public, unlisted, or private? Every video that I upload, what category do I usually fit into? And I think these categories need an update because a lot of these don't quite fit anymore. Which would you recommend if I've got a graphic design business where I am showing my, por my portfolio of graphic design simply for the fun of it. Which of these would you say I should put it into? Technology. <laughs> maybe technology. technology maybe. maybe people and blogs. Maybe how to. So some videos don't fit into these categories, and I need to update these. So I don't know maybe which kinds of videos I'm going to upload, so I might not set it. I can always change it. The license. You are a content creator. You um, own your content. Uh, YouTube distributes it, but you own it. And just like any sort of copyrighted work, uh, you can have a different license for it. Uh, I have to read up again on the differences between these two, but basically the standard YouTube license gives you the protection that it's your video, people can't steal it, and so forth. Creative Commons is the more modern and liberal license where I uploaded a video, and great, make a mashup of it, change it and upload it yourself. I don't care, I love it, I want to share. Those are the two big ideas here, one where it's a little bit more locked down, to protect your intellectual property and more where you would like to share your content for anyone to do what they want with it. So the default is probably what you want. Maybe on the title you're constantly uploading how-to videos so that can save you some time in that your video will automatically say how-to and then how to use peach, how to grow a peach, how to bake a peach, etc. So if you're going to use constant titles up here, maybe you're building an audience of a particular brand, such as I made up that YouTube video, it was the Tech Review Tuesday series. Tech Review Tuesday. And I'm going to be uploading a video every Tuesday with a tech review of one minute long, so it'll save me time that it automatically is named that. Then I add to it the product. If you don't fill anything... Set defaults for videos you are uploading through your web browser. So it's going to go direct, this is attached directly to each video. So, it, so it's basically your channel because it's every video you upload. Nope, okay. this is your video. Your channel title of your, the title of your channel is on another screen. This is going to be the text added to each video you upload. If you don't fill anything in here, it will try to take the file name of your video. Notice the file that I gave you is Victor Campos, Tech Review Tuesday, Moto E. It's going to take that title and use it, it's going to take that file name and use it as the title of your video. So if you're uploading a video called Movie Clip, it's going to name it that by default. You can change it, of course, but keep that in mind. Any video that you upload, if you're uploading video mov11598.mp4, that's what your video is going to be called by default. So name your videos with dashes, and it will remove the dashes and put the proper title there, which you can change if you'd like. And again, I want custom thumbnails because that's not so flattering. 
um, description. Here, when we upload individual videos, we want to take time to craft this. We can write as much as we want. And here we can write, for example, well, we'll do that on the individual video. Here what I'm saying is, what if we're constantly also showing our home page? I want to write here the name of my website, victortech.cool, that is, that does exist, dot cool. And so I'm going to say every time I upload a video, it will automatically have that link and I just fill in the rest. We'll see what we can upload for the rest when we upload the video. Can you recommend a website? I recommend what makes more sense to you because you might have you might have a, an eBay listing that you're trying to push in this video so you could put your eBay listing there this one is going to apply to every video that I upload which I may or may not want When you sign this and you sign it for every video, I mean every video, is, does that affect the database when, it, when it's being searched? I mean, what, if, if everything has Tech Review Tuesday, and somebody just going and said Tech Review Tuesday and search it, and it'll pull up all of your Tech Review? It could, definitely. That's the point of all of this. This is our SEO. This is our search engine optimization, which is technically YouTube. So if you take my SEO classes, we're always talking about writing proper keywords and descriptions right. for our websites. We have to do the same thing here on YouTube. Because when people search for Tech Review Tuesday on YouTube, your videos could appear. Because you use that keyword. Oh, okay. So you could put your name there as a title for every one of them. And you could. Out of it. You could, but you have to be careful because you have a limited amount of space. This video here is already getting too long. It's saying at two lines of space, uh -huh. and on some people's browsers, it's going to get cut off right there. Like this one's a shorter one here. Five moments in Disney movies that ruined our lives. Yeah, it's getting longer. That one got cut off. Disney movies explained. Those a little mermaid lion it got cut off. So you can put your name on whatever you want. We do have a finite amount of space okay. to be viewed as a thumbnail. Yes. I guess to my confusion, but when I say I want to upload five different subjects, this description is the default for all five of those videos that I put on the different subjects. Yeah. So how what about the keywords that we just discussed? So if I only want the keywords to reference walk, dog walking, and then the other one is window washing, and the next one's how to bathroom with carpet to dry powder. You know? All of these can be edited on a case by case basis. These are the upload defaults. This will be added to everything I upload, and I can change it later. So it might make sense for some of us to use these, or for some of us not to can use these. Can you change it during the upload process? Definitely. Or you can just leave it blank. You can leave it blank. Yeah. I'm saying this from experience, that if you're going to upload the same kinds of videos, this might save you some effort. But all of this is optional. Here we've got tags. So again, specific keywords. If I'm constantly uploading how-to videos, I could add the tag how to, comma, tutorial, comma. Um, that's another related keyword. Um, <clears throat> explanation. And I can change these however I want, case by case basis comments and ratings. Uh, like any social network, people can like it, people can share it, people can comment on it. Um, one thing that I highly recommend here, on every kind of video, <coughs> comments and ratings, allow comments, change it to, instead of all, approved. If you leave it on all, any crazy person can write any crazy thing on your video. <coughs> You can delete people's comments, no problem. I would rather not let a comment go through and have that ruin people's day. So I get an email that says a new comment has been added to your video. I can then look at it, delete it, or approve it. It's that extra step of approval, it's moderation. But this is what's going to save your sanity, save your brand.
save the internet. Moderation. The internet is great, it's very, very, very open, but one of the things about it is people can abuse it. So if instead you set this to approve, people can write crazy things, it never shows up. No problem. It's your content. It's like if someone starts to say, well, you're freedom of speech, you, I need to, cause I need to say what I want. Well, um, freedom of speech doesn't apply if someone is on your property, on your front porch, yelling at you death threats and such. You say, get on the sidewalk and do that. Get off of my property and then yell at me and then the cops are coming. Here, same thing, get off my lawn. Only approved comments are going to be shown. Bad comments never need to show up. You can nuke it by simply saying no comments at all. And you're not going to deal with any comments at all. That's up to you to decide. But I, for my clients and for my classes, suggest that you run social media as a dialogue, as a back and forth, as people commenting and other people commenting to them and you commenting to them and a dialogue, back and forth. But keep it civil, and the way you do that is by approving comments. Yes? One more thing. This, okay, so what we're doing now only happens, only affects any video that we upload. It doesn't retroactively. Uh, Good point. Good point. This doesn't go back to the videos you've already uploaded. This is future uploads. Okay. Would you like people to thumbs up or thumbs down? No, my ego can't take it, so turn it off. <laughs> If you do want thumbs up or thumbs down, just turn that on. Remember a few years ago, you could give star ratings. Five stars, three stars, one star. YouTube changed it just to simply thumbs up, thumbs down. Yes or no. None of the subtlety of four stars, two stars. It's either good or bad. So you can turn that on or off. Video language. By the default here, you can only select one language at a time. If your, langu if your videos are usually in English, Set it to English so English speakers can find it. If your videos are usually in Tagalog, then set it to Tagalog and you will get that target much more. So set it to nothing and no, nothing bad happens, but it, you should set it to the language that you're trying to target more often. Anyone can watch any video in any language, but this will be focused more to, the, to those in the particular language you've chosen. This next one I'm intrigued about. I don't know exactly how it fully works. They've added it recently, which is the subtitle contributions. Enabling this feature will allow YouTube users to contribute subtitles and closed captions. I don't know if there is approval of these first, but this is letting the community help you caption your video. It's very useful for your videos to be captioned because then if someone wants to watch a video but they can't hear it, they can watch the subtitles at the bottom. And that helps you. Uh, SEO-wise also, it takes a lot of effort, though, for you to type everything that you've said. And there are shortcuts, which I'll show later. But if we turn this on, apparently we can help, we can let people help us subtitle our videos. I haven't, I have it active on a couple of my videos and such. I haven't gotten any submissions. I don't know how it fully works. I don't know if it automatically shows up. So that's scary. I don't know if someone can go in and write butts and then it shows up on my video. I don't know. So maybe you guys can do it and tell me how it works. Or maybe I'll look it up. Caption certification, that's kind of a weird one because um, if you do have captions or subtitles on your videos, you have to certify here, this content has never aired on television in the US. This content has only aired on television in the US without captions, blah, blah, blah. Probably you'll be selecting the first one if you're creating videos to upload to YouTube. They've never appeared on television. They're on YouTube. And some other ones. I usually do the first one. Some of these other ones hardly apply to people. This one's optional. Show suggested video improvements. At a certain point I get tired of them, but what this is going to tell you is you uploaded your video. It's a little shaky. Would you like us to stabilize it? It's not magic. It doesn't always work that well. Yeah, I've got that experience. They made it worse. <laughs> huh. well, you might also suggest your video is a little dark. Would you like us to brighten it up? So again, I used to leave this on and I never really liked their suggestions, so I turned it off. But you could leave it on and see what you get. 
is your video is shot at a particular location because you've got a shop on Main Street. If you do, put in the address of your business and that will um, give people a location for them to to go to, especially if they're watching your video on mobile and then that looks like a really tasty cupcake. Oh, they're only five blocks away. Let me drive to them. So if you attach a location, that could give you real traffic to your, to your location. Make video stats watchable publicly. You're going to get statistics about all your videos and such. Would you like other people to see your stats, yes or no? If you're just starting off, it might not be a good idea to show off you've got zero views. So you can turn that off. And then once you get traffic, you can turn it on. And popularity breeds popularity. And the opposite is true. Being unpopular makes you more unpopular. So if you've got zero views, you'll probably stay at zero views. If you've got 20 views, that will help you get more views. If you made any changes here, remember to click Save at the top right corner. We don't have quite time to look at featured content. I'll skip that. Branding, I will mention very briefly. This is something you might want to look into. This is how you add a watermark to the corner of your videos. So if someone steals your video, it's got your watermark there. Your little logo on the bottom corner. We don't have time to do it, but this will be for you to design a simple little square graphic, your logo, and put it on here, and it'll attach itself to all your videos. Advanced. One thing on that, uh, yeah. uh, can you, I mean, since video can is the hot spot where you're looking at, um, can be anywhere in a video, does it put it in one central location or is it free flow? It puts it always on the bottom right corner. Bottom right corner. Mm -hmm. Let's look at advanced. If you want to change, for example, the name of your channel, you can change it. If you want to change your icon, you can change it. One thing that they did very recently that I'm not happy about is you used to be able to... You've got, a, you've got a name for your channel, but you've also got an address for your channel. This particular channel at the moment... This particular channel at the moment has... can't quite find it, but this particular channel at the moment has an address that's something like youtube.com slash gibberish. Everyone gets a channel with a gibberish name. It used to be that you can then claim your nice name pretty easily, and I would be youtube.com slash just stuff. Obviously, if it was taken by someone else, I'd have to get more creative. Now, from what I understand it, you need minimum 100 subscribers to change your channel name. And it's buried in here somewhere. So it's like the Facebook. Yeah, much higher level though. Facebook yeah. needs 30. It used to be in this advanced screen that we're looking at that there was a button that says change URL. It's not there anymore. They moved it elsewhere. And as I poked around to keep up to date with this stuff, now I've seen that it says now in order to maintain a high level of quality of YouTube videos, we require at least 100 subscribers to your channel before you can change your, your name. So that's going to be a high bar. But at the moment, you have this gibberish kind of name, and that official gibberish name is your channel. That's what you would be sharing on Twitter or Facebook or your business card or whatever. Question? So, the what you just typed in there would be like the default that they've given you. Yeah. And then to change that, you need the subscribers. Yeah. yeah. Is that followers or leads? Um, followers. followers. Yeah. If it were views, we might be able to get a couple of our videos, 100 views, and then do it. But it seems to be followers. That's harder. So under advanced, we can change some of the things, but not that, for example. What's, what's our country, so we can target an audience. Uh, you might want to change that. Uh, and here's keywords that we can attach to the whole channel in total. 
same sort of idea. Keywords separated by commas, and these are attached to your whole channel, or keywords on the other screen attached to individual videos. Question? Going back to the channel names, what if somebody has the channel that you want and you wanted to purchase it from them, would it be possible? And they said yes. Would it be possible to purchase the channel from them? I believe technically YouTube doesn't allow that. Oh, okay. But between, between private parties through private email, mm -hmm. you can figure it out. Advertisements. Allow advertisements to be displayed alongside my videos. It does not apply to videos that you monetize and videos that are claimed by a third party. Here's how you can turn off those, those, those ads from appearing on your videos. If those are annoying to you, turn them off. However, ads are how you make money from YouTube. When someone watches your video, they're going to get ads in various ways. And when that person clicks on that ad, you get money. How much? It varies from a variety of factors, and like I said, I've made 10 bucks off of YouTube, and I've been making that since February of 2015. So it's taken, you know, whatever, nine months to make $10 on YouTube. I'm not, I'm not crazy over YouTube that I'm, you know, uploading something every day, like some people, but in 10 months, through my different channels, I made, I, I made $10. So if you do want to make money off YouTube, you have to show advertising. They share that revenue with you. If you're not interested in that, turn it off. I kind of recommend it's not that hard to set up monetization. You will have to provide a valid bank account and such for them to pay you, but you can be uploading these videos. Who knows if you get a viral hit and you made a few dollars. So I kind of recommend people go through the monetization process. It's inside of this advanced screen under status. Go through it on your own, set it up, maybe get a, a, a few dollars here and there. You never know. If you've got AdWords, you can link your Google AdWords with your YouTube to further monetize and also to, to buy these, to buy this placement of your video, to, to pay some amount so that your video shows up higher than your competitor. That's a whole AdWords pay-per-click site. We don't have time to talk about that, but if you've got that set up, you can further take advantage of YouTube and traffic. When I was watching a few of these videos and then it said, coming up next, whatever, that's this. It's on by default and I recommend it. Let my video be promoted on other people's channels. I want more traffic. For some reason, if you don't, you turn that off. And again, ego boost and such display the number of subscribers that I have. I don't want to show that I've got two subscribers. I want people to think I've got 40, 1,000. So if I don't display that, you can keep that allure going. You can turn that off, turn off that other statistic, and they won't know that you just started your channel two weeks ago and you've got 40 views. But once you've got 4,000 views, show that off because popularity breeds popularity. If you make any changes here, remember to click Save at the bottom. Oh, and one more thing here. If you've got Google Analytics, which we will set up next time, we can attach your Google Analytics tracking ID so that from Analytics control panel, we can see more statistics about YouTube as well in one consolidated place. No, I just said that we're, we're not going to look at it in much detail. You'll have to go through it yourself, but it's, it's useful to set up. Is that listed on your advanced screen here? Yeah, under advanced, it's under uh, AdWords. Some of you might see it, some of you might not, but some of you might see. This comes from verification. You've probably verified your channel, right? Yeah, I did. Verify. So there is a lot. What was the old saying? Uh, membership has its privileges. So if you verify your channel, which is not complex, it's back here on your status and go to that verify. Yeah, I had to text my phone, but in the code. Mm -hmm. Exactly, you just get a code. So you're going to get more options. One of them here that seems to be missing from mine, but is active on some of you, is associated websites. That's how you 
link your YouTube channel to your website so you can do extra things, such as playing this video, and then my website can be linked to it from the middle of the video. Without an associated website, YouTube won't let you link your um, video back to your home page. You have to associate your official website. That's a little process as well, not complicated, and the first is to verify your channel. Oh wow, so I verified the live stream and verified the channel. Yeah, lots of great features for verification. Like monetization also. We'll look at one more thing here, then we'll upload the video and talk about what to do with the video. Any any questions at this point? At what point are we gonna choose verify? You're going to do it on your own. I'm going to go here to uh, click Create. Click this Create button right here. Under Create, we've got the video editor. So once we've uploaded a video, we can do basic editing here. But Movie Maker and iMovie is still better. Audio Library. This is the biggest thing I can tell you. The question always is, I don't know what music to put on my channel. Can I borrow that Justin Bieber? Uh, album and take his music? No. No. So the short answer to all of those questions is always no. The long answer is always no. You always want original content. But here, free music. YouTube is giving us thousands of tracks in different styles. And here's how I would manage this screen. We have all of these tracks. We can view by... we can star them to favorite them to always come back to them. But we can view by genre so we've got these different genres. Classical would work nice, or pop, or whatever. We've got a mood. Give me mood. Uh, give me music that is romantic, or angry. Give me music that's related to piano. Give me music that my video is three minutes long. Give me three minute long music, so that it matches. You can search those on your own. But here's the biggest thing that I'm going to tell you: always change attribution into attribution not required. What this means is all of these that have this little person are in the category attribution required. What that means is if you use this song somewhere in your video or description you have to say you use that song from that artist. You can use it, you can monetize it, you can make money off of it using this music, but if you set to a, if you use an attribution required and you don't attribute it, you will probably get an email that says attribute this or remove it. You might as well avoid that issue by just say show me music I don't have to attribute, and that's still thousands of tracks. And now all of these that don't have the little person, I can download these load them into iMovie, use them on my video, cut them, edit them, change the length, whatever, I can use them. Let me just take a quick sample here. JJ from Kevin Mc... McLeod. in here. Genre, I'll go with dance and electronic. Notice it cut down the amount of tracks available. Duration, I only need two minutes long. And the mood is going to be bright. Question. What are those bars that are at the... Uh... These bars over here tell you the popularity of other people on YouTube downloading it and using it. So if I've got one that's very high up, in theory, that means that my video that used this song, someone else used that song too. I don't know how exactly. I don't know if they only used 10 seconds of it. I don't know. But other people have also used that song. And oh no, my video out of 10 billion might also be using the same song as someone else. That you may never run across another video that has that same song. Can you flip it around to have like the most popular or you know what? There, there isn't a, there isn't a way to organize it that way. Um, for some reason, you doesn't seem to let us organize alphabetically or in that sort of thing. 
or through organized columns. So I hope they would do that at some point. So we'd have to browse a little bit. Based on my criteria here, it went down to three possible choices. If I want to come back to these songs ever again, instead of searching, click the little star here to save it into your favorites. We can always come back to it. You can click the download button to download it. Obviously, we don't need to download it. But that's how usually nowadays I make a, a, a video for a, a client. Um, I come here, I browse around, I find a, I find a video that works. I, I mean a sound, I uh, probably listen to two or three of them, but you want to be careful because I know that for myself, I start to listen to one sounds good, but what about another one? And I listen to it, that one sounds good, but maybe another one. Okay. At a certain point, if you like it, go for it. Don't try to find yet another more better one, much better one, because they're all perfect, they're all great. Just find one that fits, go with it. So the file format is all MP3s? Mm -hmm. They don't, you can't do AI No, but MP3 is very universal. It'll work on iMovie and uh, Windows Movie Maker, so it's universal. So let's see here. Close my mouth. Yes. Um, a copyrighted material has to be in the description. That's a little bit out of our scope. Uh, it's. I would highly recommend on YouTube. How do, I, how do I attribute copyrighted material? I've seen a few videos recently where people give out tips and tutorials on how to do that. It's kind of complex. That's why I'm saying try to use as, as least com copyrighted stuff as possible to yeah, not have to worry I, I about it. I use the intro at the beginning of a song of mine. Hmm. So. Yeah. I've seen videos that help you how to figure that out, so I would, I would look them up. Okay, one final question. <laughs> Uh, are you able, if you were able to create sounds, like I go into GarageBand and I create tons of sounds, can I upload them? You can. I haven't done it, and I don't know the whole process of it, but there's some process in here for you to submit your own music to get it up there on YouTube and get people to, to use it. We'll pay you if we... That's that's one I know I've used. Uh, I've got a I like I, I like to collect comic books, and I've got a few videos that I upload about comic books, and I've got that song in the background of my of, of my videos. So um, you've got thousands to choose from, but you're you're it's not you know infinite, and it's not hundreds of thousands. So you might run across a if you want this particular kind dance bright two minutes long, you're gonna you are gonna be limited. So. The big thing that I'll tell you here is, however, keep it under attribute not required. It's, it's going to save you the most headache. You've also got sound effects. You can go up to sound effects, and there's a bunch of sound effects here. For example, I'm making a video here, and I need the aggressive zombie snarl sound effect. <laughs> what about the... Alien Squawk. Anyway, you can explore those on your own. There's also ad supported music. I haven't used these enough really um, to see how good they are or not, but there are. You, you do have the ability to use official songs. So there's some David Bowie songs here. Um, I haven't. I don't really use these too much, so I'm not exactly sure how they work. Again, I try to avoid the copyrighted music. It usually has too much trouble and it's worth. But it looks like if I do use Space Oddity, it says if you use this song, it is viewable worldwide, and you can use ads on it. Copyright owner can change their policies or take action. So it's sort of saying that I guess I can use that song in my tech review. Although the original copyright holder may change this Justin Bieber song, again, I guess I can use it, but if I'm iffy, you should be iffy. So stick with the free music, attribution not required. Let's take a moment then at the top right corner. Let's click that upload button. You get upload, and here you have a few options. Down here, 
upload instructions, mobile uploads, troubleshooting. So there's info right here for you. I have enough increased my limit, so I'm limited to 15 minutes. I have over here create videos from slideshows. Upload photos and create a video quickly. Go to my video editor. Start a live stream or import videos if I've got Google Photos. If I've got Google Plus set up, import them from that other location. I have the big upload button. This, this is not obvious, perhaps, but that's a button to click to upload, or you can just drag the file before that. We've also got this video is going to go public, not automatically until you click OK, but it'll go public. It can also go unlisted, which means it'll be, it'll exist on YouTube, and if someone has the address to it, the direct address to that video, they can watch it. So if you share a video that is unlisted in your email newsletter, your email subscribers will see it. But that doesn't stop one of your email subscribers from forwarding that newsletter to their 500 friends, and now those 500 people got the link to that unlisted video. The next level is private. By default, no one will see it unless you explicitly uh, mention specific email addresses here. And this is very cumbersome to set up for like an email distribution list. You have to put it one by one manually. It doesn't let you upload a, a database of emails. This is really just to keep it private for no one to see it. It's uploaded, but no one can really see it easily. For us, for practice, we're going to do private. And once you've set up a couple more options under Verify, you will also have an option called... Um, it's called... I think it's called Schedule. You can set it so that it'll upload automatically next Tuesday. So I can spend this weekend making five videos, schedule them to appear automatically every Tuesday for the next month. Is that a plugin? Or is that no, it's, it's in YouTube, but you have to do the verification process. It's one of the many features of verification. Let's set this to private, and then click on that big upload arrow, and let's go find our video on your folder in the desktop. It's in that YouTube clip folder, and you want the one that has the full name, not the movie clip. That's unedited. It's got the mistakes and everything. You want the one with my name on it. It's only 43 megabytes. So one and a half minutes, 43 megabytes. Video takes a lot of space. That YouTube video that I uploaded that was three hours long, that was over a gigabyte. Like two gigabytes, I don't remember. It took a while to upload. But HD videos and the length of the videos make big videos. So select your video, click open, and right away it'll start to upload. It won't be public, even if you had selected public. No one will see it until at the top right corner you approve it. This is uploading relatively fast. We've got pretty fast internet connection here. At home, you're going to be disappointed. You're probably not going to have our 100 megabit internet access like we have here. At home, you're probably going to have a 5 megabit upload. Maybe 20, maybe 50. Here we've got 100. At Southwestern College, we've got gigabit. We can upload it up to 1,000 gigabytes, megabytes. But anyway, it's already uploaded. Done. It's processing it. It's looking at your video. It's checking for copyrighted content. It's going to build a thumbnail for you. It's going to give you suggestions about different things. But don't click that done yet. We can edit the video, especially if it's a 20-minute video. We can edit aspects of the video while it's uploading. So as a... Uh, yes? All I have is your video playing. You didn't uh, put the video in the upload button, perhaps. Make sure you drag, drag it, dragged it right onto the right into the arrow. If you uploaded it elsewhere, it might have just played it. But I'll be with you one moment. Um, here on this screen, notice I've uploaded it. I put in those defaults, and so here it is. Tag Review Tuesday. If you didn't put a default, it's going to take the file name and put it there. It put my address, it put my keywords, it's having me choose a thumbnail. Uh, not so good. So it's going to try to pick a thumbnail somewhere near the beginning of the video, somewhere near the end of the video, and somewhere near the center of the video. But default will be somewhere in the center. None of these really I'm liking. 
I would love to upload my own custom video, my own thumbnail, I don't have that button. Once I verify, I can upload a custom photo. But I'm going to set this one. This one might be good. It's going to show the product and it's going to show the product right below it. Right there. My eyes look weird, but it shows the name of the product. Mm -hmm. So we've got basic, translations, advanced, and if you verify, you will also have monetize to make money off your video. This then is the art and the science of what do I write here? I'm adding my Tech Review Tuesday. It's a, it's a series of mine, so I'm going to do Tech Review Tuesday, Motorola, Moto E. This requires you to think like SEO for your website. What would people search for? I have an idea of what this video is, but put yourself in the shoes of people on YouTube searching for something. What if I search this for the Motorola Moto E review? What if I call this the only Motorola Moto E review you need? This is all valid stuff. Think in terms about what your customers might be searching for. Should I buy the Motorola Moto E? Moto E. Should I buy the Moto E? Question mark. So, full sentences, real words, thinking in terms of how people might search YouTube, how to fix a doorbell. So my video better be called How to Fix a Doorbell, not Tech Review Tuesday Doorbell. <laughs> right? How to do something. Should I buy something? Top 10 whatever. Think in terms of what people are going to be searching up on this search box. I'm going to put my address there above the fold. I can then put in as much text as I want here, like probably 10,000 characters. Um, yeah. Does the description help in the algorithms? Yeah. Or the description helps also. So you do want to write a, you know, whatever makes sense. Two or three sentences, a paragraph, whatever. Full of keywords, but not literally just keywords, comma, comma, comma. That's what those keywords are down here. You want to write a real sentence with also words that people might be searching for. How does the how does the Motorola compare with the Android? I'm gonna put it in my description. That's how people might search. Yes. Yeah, you said ten thousand words if you want. I know that's unlimited, but isn't there something with like one hundred and sixty words for a lot of those search engines that they don't go past the first one? That's a little bit different. What that is is when you do a search, and the results appear on the search engine page, it's gonna cut off at a certain point. So. There is a limitation visually, sometimes, on those things, but here there really isn't that much of a limitation for what the algorithm is going to be looking for to show someone a video. So I still wouldn't do 10,000 words, or 1,000, or 400 words. I would still keep it pretty concise, kind of like a tweet or a post on Facebook. Keep it concise, but hit the keywords and hit the descriptions that really would make sense for people searching. Yes. Yes, exactly. Everywhere. Exactly. You don't need to duplicate because it appears everywhere. So I'm going to say here. Victor takes a look at the Motorola Moto E for Tech Review Tuesday. In here, I'm going to mention the name of my series. In here, I'm going to be more detailed that this is your first chance to make your first impression, your only chance to make your first impression. And here, I can go on in more detail. And this is cumbersome. The question was, can I put chapter markers and such? This is where you would put it. You would write it like this. You would say, at 0, 2, 0, 0, at 2 seconds is where, you know, 
intro at 10, uh, no, actually I'm going with, you have to be careful here, this is minutes. Okay, zero minutes, five seconds is intro. At zero minutes, um, 15 seconds is um, specs. It's very manual, it's very cumbersome, it's not that friendly at all. Maybe in the next versions, as they evolve this for us, they'll make it easier. But all that you have to do is write a time code here, and what that is, and when someone views the description, that will be an active link, they click on 15 seconds, and it'll jump them to the 15th second of your video. At this point, I don't know my seconds yet, so I would have to play the video on my desktop and make notes, or I would play it on YouTube on the next screen and make the annotations here. It's very cumbersome, but it could be useful. Yeah, that's cool. Yes. For the time, how do you make that an active link? Automatic. You just write the you just write the time here, and it'll make it active for you. Oh, nice. What are you calling those? Time codes. Time codes. Time codes. Mm -hmm. So if I had, you know, an hour-long video, I'm going to write here at 0 hour, 25 minute, 13th second. At second hour, 33rd minute on the dot. That's the time code. Seconds, minutes, hours. So people are crazy enough to upload a 24-hour long YouTube video too. A video that you can watch non-stop for 24 hours. So I can say at hour 22, something really cool happened. <laughs> My cat jumped on the camera. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So we've got at 5 seconds there was an intro and at 22 hours later the cat jumped on the camera. <laughs> So it's from right to left seconds, minutes, nice hours. Yeah. Well, not a lot of people know about it, unfortunately. So you have a leg up a com a, a, on the competition if you know that. That's because cool. yeah, I, I don't like watching videos, and especially when the title says um, like a certain thing, and then you sit there and watch it for an hour, and you're like, wait, it didn't happen yet. <laughs> It's just part of the title. <laughs> that was clickbait right there. Yeah. yeah, I learned that the hard way. So here you can take advantage to write more of your description, more of your keywords, complete sentences of what people could be searching for. You could write in here annotations. This is the sky's the limit here because what you can do is get fancy and write simply something like chapters. And there's a little division here. People will see that as a division. Um, that this is the section of chapters. We saw when we looked at CNET's video, when Brian had on Google Glass, he had a whole thing that looked like this. Director. And then there was a link there. Uh, episode. And then there was text there. And then he had production. And then he had all, all the people's addresses. If you, if you add there a link, it'll make it an active link. Production. You can have more than one link. So how did we do it with the, the names? Studios. Right? I believe that one was doable because it was a big company. The big companies have some features that we don't. So that kind of company okay. allowed them to do it or that way. Can you use HTML if you know how to really put the link and then you could add it as a... Uh, yeah, I yeah. don't think so. I'm going to try it. That's a good point. Let me try it and we'll see what it looks like. So. I don't think it'll work, but I'm going to put an HTML tag right there. After I publish it, we'll see if that worked. I don't think it will. Oh, what is it saying here? Brackets aren't allowed in your description. Yeah, so it's <laughs> if you put the address in directly like, like that, I put in an address like that, it let that yeah, go through. Okay. All right, so you want to pick a thumbnail, get it, get inspiration from all the other YouTube channels, how do they put their thumbnails. These things are going to be tiny. Even though it's asking you to upload, let me make a note here. I'm going to put these notes in the folder later. But uh, YouTube thumbnail size. 
it's the standard 1920 by 1080 pixels. It's standard HD quality size. So in Photoshop or Paint or whatever graphic software, make your graphic for your thumbnail, HD size, 1920 by 1080 pixels. It's still going to shrink it down to this tiny thing here, so if you put in a huge amount of detail on that huge thumbnail, you're going to see, most people are going to see it like this. So really, look at people's thumbnails and see what's effective. Usually one big bold graphic. That's it. No complexity. Because even though it's asking us for a big graphic, most of us are seeing it on a small screen. TVs nowadays are coming with, with YouTube and such built in, but most of us are seeing it on a tablet or on a mobile device. So we're seeing here just the face. Um, you know, there's a, a skydiving cat, apparently. Um, so something that catches your attention easily like that. What was the thumbnail size again? 1920 by 1080. And you see such a variety. You see in the thumbnails themselves, they have the branding. That was in Photoshop. They took a still from the video. They put Evo on it. This one here, perhaps a still from the video. They put in the name of the movie and so forth. This one seems like they just took a still from the movie, a specific shot of the movie. And there it is. Here that looks like a movie poster. I can't read that, but it looks like a movie poster. These thumbnails appear in different sizes throughout YouTube. This is like a medium size. You, they're even smaller on a mobile, and they can be even bigger once you actually watch a video. They might be a little bit bigger on the side here, or when the video ends, and there's a suggestion for another video at the end, like that, that X-Men one. That's that same size video, but it uses this 1080 by 1920 in different dimensions, in different sizes. But look at what the uh, what the competition is doing and how they do it. This one is not as good as it could be. I can barely see that it says Ice Age something or other. But I recognize Strat. I recognize the little character. So there's the, there's the logo of the new Batman Superman movie. So that makes sense. Look at what the competition is doing. Here's an example from, from one of my channels, one of mine uh, about comics and such. Um, when you actually view when you actually view the when you view someone's channel it looks like another way as well you're going to see that the you're going to see the thumbnails like this so again if you have a small space to show something that is big bold letters some kind of graphic at a certain point your text is too small so be careful about that so This particular channel is 70, but this particular video, half an hour long, has 159 views. So you're going to see subscribers and views for the whole channel. You're going to see views for individual videos. So how did you get to be Junior? Um, I got that before, before. Oh, they made that restriction. So, so I've got these playlists where you can watch the three-hour Comic-Con Mega Mix, and that does have a few hundred views. Actually, people don't probably don't watch it beginning to end. I can look at my stats, how much retention. I can see it. the stats are going to tell me. People were really engaged for the first 10 minutes, then less people. They skipped over to 30 minutes, more views. Then they skipped over to 45 minutes, more views. So all those stats are in our control panel. And it's got 123 views. And it's in a playlist. You want to watch all my Comic-Con 2015 videos? They're all here in order. But I had to set this up. And you do that right here. Add to playlist. I'm uploading this video. It's part of my Tech Review Tuesday series. Add to playlist. <clears throat> I have no playlists. I'm going to create one. Tech Review Tuesday. Create. So now this video and the 12 that I'm going to upload this year are all going to be part of that Tech Review Tuesday playlist. People can go and watch them all in order. <clears throat> if I don't have this to private, let's say public, 
I can automatically send a notification to Google Plus and Twitter that my video is live. So if I've got 100 followers on Twitter and two followers on YouTube, and I have this to public, I can activate that and it'll automatically, once I log in, it'll automatically, when I click publish, send an email, send a tweet for me to my Twitter telling my followers, I've uploaded a new video and it's going to have this text here or whatever text I write in the tweet. So Facebook, yeah. I think they used to have Facebook, mm -hmm. but Facebook and Google are not friends, yeah, yeah. so no more connection. Mm -hmm. Unlisted. It's available online, but no one can see it unless they have the link. Every YouTube video has a link of gibberish. And so that link is the link to my video, and case does matter. Capital J. This video starts with a capital J. It's a certain video. If it had a lowercase j, it's a different video. And that's the link we're not able to change to. Uh more descriptive. Yes, this link cannot be edited at all. Mm -hmm. The link of your channel can, but you need a hundred followers, or subscribers. And then once you change the link to your channel, instead of saying link, it'll say well, what? And it'll, you get a hundred followers, how will that link be different? You will be able to choose instead of youtube.com xyz xy, it'll say youtube.com victor's reviews. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to jump over here to translate or translations. Right now my description is right here and I'm going to set this description that it is in English. What I could do to reach more of an international audience after I set it to English is then also write a translation in Spanish. Notice it is not automatic. I'm saying this description is in um, English. I also want a version in Spanish for people from Mexico to see it, but I have to write it manually. Oh. It does tell me here, get professional translation services. Professional is code word for pay. <laughs> so you have to pay to get Google to translate it for you, and it's in translation, it's in, it's in beta, notice this is by translation. It, that's nothing to stop you from you taking your description, going over to plain old Google search and doing a Google Translate. It will do it. It's not going to be the best, as you've probably seen when you try to use that thing. Mm -hmm. It's still not that smart. So if you are going to add uh, international languages, you're probably going to do it manually or get someone that does speak the language because you're using slang and the uh, and the automated system doesn't understand it. So you need someone that actually speaks it. This could be useful to you if you are international. I'm, never mind, I'm not going to put it internationally. Um, but it could be useful. Yes, if you got out of it, what you can do is go back to Video Manager and then click Edit to go back to Mm -hmm. So here we're still looking at, yeah, it, it, I would think, okay, I'm done with translation, so I'll click done, but unfortunately that will publish the video. So we don't want to click done until we know we're done with it. Advanced settings. Here's, if we set these things on our, on our default settings, there are a lot of them are filled in already, such as allow comments when approved. I don't want to go in every time I upload a video and turn that on because the default is allow any crazy person to write any crazy thing. That's why you want to go to that default screen and set some of this up. The standard license, I want this approved. People will be able to comment. Do you want the comments to be the newest one first or the top ones? Meaning someone comments, it was a nice comment, someone gave a thumbs up to that comment. I want the good comments to come to the top. Popularity breeds popularity. If you don't want it that like that, just put it in order. The newest comment shows up first. Wrong category, I can change it. 
I can add or remove the location, the video, so all of those defaults can be overridden. Why do you have um, to put in your uh, video location? I have it's in my box. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, it's going to be blank. And when I was on the other screen, I typed in Southwestern College's address, and it, and it put one in. Users can view ratings for this video, yes or no. I don't want people to know. I've got, you know, two thumbs down. YouTube license indication. This is not editable here because I didn't activate monetization. But I can change that to say, where will I display my video? Right now, everywhere. I want that. Or later, if I set up monetization, only available on platforms where I can make money off of it. Not for those freeloaders. Caption certification, community contributions. If I want people to help me caption it, I can turn it on. Sure. I don't know how it works exactly. Distribution options allow people to take my video and embed it on their website. You might say, that's terrible. They're going to steal my video. No. YouTube is going to provide an official code for someone to take that code, put it on their website. Maybe they wrote a blog about how to use Peach and they used my video, but YouTube is giving them the code to bring people back to my, to my YouTube channel. So if I allow embedding, people can share my video to their channel and get traffic back to me. If I don't want people to share my video, I can turn that off. And people, if they're really, really good hackers, they can still figure out how to take your video. Anything you put online really is not safe. Someone will figure out a way to get around it. But I do want some of that traffic, free traffic. As soon as I click Done and Publish, let my subscribers, all zero of them, know that I, got a, I have a brand new video. When I have 70 subscribers, 12 subscribers, 2 subscribers, I want them to know. They will get an email that says, Victor's Tech Reviews just uploaded a video. They can click the link on their email, come back and watch my video. The annoying thing is I believe this only works one time. The one time that you uploaded the video on this screen here, if you turn this off, and you want to turn it on later, I don't believe it'll work anymore. It has to be this first time. And it's on by default, which is good. Is this video age-restricted? Is it alcohol-related? Is it adult-related, etc.? If you turn that on, a user will have to log in with a verified um, birthday to see your video. Recording date. I don't think there's much use to this, but I always set it anyway. I can click this video was uploaded, was recorded today. I don't think that really has much meaning, even though I always do it. But you could say that this was recorded, you know, on January 1st. Show or not my stats, the other stats from my video. And this might take off or not, even though it's been around a few years, is this video 3D. If someone has 3D glasses, they can watch my video in 3D. That requires a lot of setup, and you have to upload a special kind of video, and then people can watch it in 3D. That one, I don't think, is, file is taking off. Good? Yeah, because it's double the video. It's two videos side by side, basically. What YouTube is trying to push instead of 3D videos is the sometimes you see it sometimes you don't the there's a link sometimes that you see which is the um, the 360 view type of video the, well it's, it's 360, let's do it here, 360 video Grand Canyon. I see these at conferences and such nowadays. Someone walking around with some sort of, some sort of weird rig that is like a, a globe full of cameras pointing in all directions. Someone's walking around, they're recording every angle. Well, you say, this looks exactly like any other video. What's the difference? The difference is I can pan around. So you can look all over the place on this video. This camera is on a special tripod. It's recording everything at once. So you know, like 10 cameras recording at once. So an even larger video to upload. 
And um, this is the newer thing. Who knows if this takes off? The 3D thing really didn't. This might. What's cool about this is that if you download, you can see the scenes right here. The water is darker here. But you can download for Android or iPhone or Windows Phone the, the YouTube 3D viewer. And if you have the special Google makes one and Samsung and the rest. There's this little device. Usually it's just plain old cardboard. You put your phone into it and you hold it up and then just by your head moving around you're going to be controlling the 3D video. I got one of those at Comic Con and it's really fun. But in order to make that kind of video that's um, very complex. You need a special rig of like 10 cameras. And basically here Google that thing that he's holding is the is the thing. It's a cardboard. You you open it up. You assemble it. You put your phone into it. You use the app, and then you can watch real you real three D videos. We're getting ahead of ourselves. That is another kind of video that you could upload. Um, content declarations. Do you have any paid product endorsements? They want you to to say here. I'm getting paid by by uh, Cisco to promote their to, to promote their router. So lots of little settings to look at. If you have the verification, you have an extra one of monetization where you can turn on show ads on my videos and how to show them. If you turn on those ads in the videos, you're going to start to collect money off of your YouTube channel. I'm going to click done. Would that be the same as published? Yeah, published or done. Yep. My video is available now at that link. If you click the link, here it is, right on my channel. There's my my channel right there, just stuff. I can go to settings, the text appeared. We're actually out of time. We didn't quite get a chance to do other things, but I will mention this. I was mentioning annotations and such. How do I make areas of my video clickable? Let's do this. Wherever you're at here, click on your icon at the top right corner. Go back to Creator Studio. If you ever get lost, always go back to the Creator Studio. That's where all your settings and everything is at. Go back to Creator Studio. Now that we've got a video, our screen here isn't so barren. It will show us we've got a video, how many views, comments, thumbs ups or downs. Go back to editing it. It will show us our analytics, how many views we've gotten in the last time period, how much we might have uh, seven views, but people watch ten minutes of time. One person can watch one video five times, and it keeps augmenting my watch time. No subscribers, but that will grow, and once I've got monetization, it will tell me how much money I'm earning. Get acclimated with the screen because it's going to give you updates. You'll see your comments here, what's new, views and subscribers. This will show you your last, I think, three or four videos at once, but once you've got 40 videos, you're going to want to get used to going over here. Let's go to Video Manager. This will then also list all your videos, a little more detail. It's in HD, the length of it, your stats and views. It's private, no one can see it. You've got edit and a drop down button under the drop down button here. This is where you, info and settings is the same as clicking edit. This is where you can go back to edit the description again, the keywords, etc. Enhancements would be where you, it's too shaky, let me reduce the shake. I don't like the music of my video, or it has no music, let me add audio. Annotations and cards we'll look at briefly. Subtitles. This is where you would go in to, to write those subtitles. It's going to play, and you're going to write what you wrote. That can be very time-consuming. That's why, like I said, these videos that I record for this class, I just upload them raw. I don't go back in and do the, do the captions. It takes forever. But if you do this, this could help your video because more people could see it, perhaps. If you lost your original file, your computer blew up, you can download it again here. Not the original 
you know, editing files, but the final version of the video you uploaded. And if you want to get rid of it, you can delete it. You don't have to. Uh, YouTube doesn't give you a limit. I've uploaded a three hour long video. There's no limit, really, to your storage here. So I would keep your videos here, just in case. Even if you're never going to show people this video, keep it private, no one will see it. But YouTube will keep a backup of it for you. We'll go look at cards. Your video will play, and at any point in the video, you can add a card. I would go to Learn More to find out how they fully work. At some point, let's say this point here, I'm going to click to add a card, and at that point I want, a, I want an unobtrusive pop-up to appear to promote another video of mine, or another channel, another playlist of mine, or for someone else's channel, another channel, because I might have this channel where I focus on tech, and another channel where I focus on cooking. So in this video I might mention my cooking channel, and I click here to add a new card, and it pops up at that moment. I can add a link to an approved website. You can click there to view what are the approved websites. There's lots of them, your own website or others. But at a certain point, you can make a card appear. To do, the, to do the links, you have to verify your account, add a website, etc. A few steps, link it directly to a merchandise site. You can see the list of approved retailers. Big Cartel, Cafe Press, so the big ones, Etsy, Google Play. So we don't have time to go into it. I would, I would have you explore it. There is the learn more, read about it on your own. This is the modern way then to add um, annotations. They pop up on the side here. They don't pop up right on my face. They're on the side. They stick around. Someone clicks on it and then they can go to that other video. It, it increases stickiness. That's a keyword people use in this business. Stickiness. They stuck around. The more you get people to stick around on your channel, the more you can convert them to a subscriber. Once they're a subscriber, they'll keep up to date with you and buy your products or whatever you're trying to do online. You can explore these other ones up here. Info settings, enhancements, audio, annotations, and captions. So again, I could teach YouTube for a whole month. This is what we were able to do for today. If you're interested in learning how to create the YouTube video that I gave you, you would take my social media class. Um, and um, when we come back next time, we're going to look at the next topic, which is webmaster tools. We're creating these YouTube videos or we're using Twitter and such, but is it working? Am I getting traffic to my website? So next week we'll talk about these webmaster tools. Bring your login and password to uh, to log into your site to connect analytics to your site to track that. Where's my traffic coming from? Is this video effective? What's my most popular page on my site? That'll be next time. That's it for the moment.